No. Ghost? No. No. Disclaimer. This is not a Game of Thrones fan fiction episode. Dire wolves were real. A hundred thousand years ago, the world was full of creatures we will never see again. And among them was one of North America's coolest ancient predators, the dire wolf. It popped up mysteriously and vanished alongside mammoths and saber-toothed cats at the end of the last ice age. People used to think that these guys were close cousins of gray wolves, but the first ever analysis of dire wolf DNA tells a different tale. They're so unique, standing out from other wolves, coyotes and dogs, that they don't quite fit in the same category. In fact, according to researchers, it's time for a new scientific classification just for these mysterious creatures. Now archaeologists have a good grip on the fact that dire wolves roamed North America from about 250,000 to 13,000 years ago. These badass creatures were around 20% larger than today's gray wolves, and you could often tell by the size of their skeletons. Like typical wolves, they likely roamed in packs, going after bison, ancient horses, and maybe even small mammoths and mastodons. A lot of them met their fate in the sticky asphalt of what we now know as the La Brea Tar Pits in Los Angeles, where they got trapped and preserved for all time. If you visit the La Brea Tar Pits Museum in California, you'll find hundreds of dire wolf skulls lining the walls. But here's the problem, our knowledge hits a dead end there. Because dire wolf skeletons resemble those of grey wolves, everyone thought these two were closely related. Scientists have been calling them Canis dirus, tossing them into the same genus as grey wolves, coyotes and dogs. But the only thing that could have settled the debate, dire wolf DNA, got wrecked by the tar in those pits. In a recent study, researchers went on a bit of a genetic treasure hunt across North America, digging into dire wolf remains at universities and museums. They managed to snatch up about one quarter of the nuclear genome and the full mitochondrial DNA from five different individuals, aged between 13,000 to over 50,000 years old. The genetic material revealed a new family tree and threw in a surprise twist. Dire wolves have their own separate lineage. They aren't in the same family tree as African jackals, gray wolves, coyotes, and dogs. In fact, they branched off nearly six million years ago. So now, instead of sticking them with the usual wolf gang, Canis genus, researchers want to put them in their own larger family with foxes, jackals, and other dog-like creatures. The proposed classification for dire wolves is Enosion dirus, and that's a designation which was first suggested all the way back in 1918. The collagen of La Brea dire wolf was also analyzed, and it was found that it backed up the idea of a species split. Hence, experts on ancient canids are giving the green light to this reclassification based on the genetic info. This shakeup certainly changes how we picture dire wolves. Forget the usual big, gray, fierce timber wolf look. Living in the warmer spots of North America, dire wolves might have rocked features more common in warm climates, like red fur, a bushy tail, and rounder ears. Think of a giant reddish coyote. When I say giant, I really want you to think big, because while a coyote weighs around 20 kilograms, the dire wolf starts at 60 kilograms. It also has some seriously unique and kinda terrifying features that made it stand out, especially when compared to the gray wolf. One of its most recognizable traits was, again, its size. Paleontologists have crunched the numbers and figured that an average adult dire wolf weighed between 60 kilograms, 132 pounds, to 68 kilograms, 150 pounds. That's already on par with the biggest gray wolves, but hey, some individuals went even bigger. Now, we don't know the exact size of these mega wolves, but paleontologists throw around a theoretical maximum of 110 kilograms, 243 pounds, for the absolute giants. Anything beyond that is a no-go, thanks to some skeletal restrictions. Even without going into the theoretical realm, the confirmed sizes still make the dire wolf one of the largest canines to ever roam the earth. And if it were a wolf, it would easily take the crown as the biggest canis species ever. Speaking of size, I gotta tell you, 
the size difference between male and female dire wolves was pretty minimal, especially when it came to their bone and teeth structure. Surprisingly, there wasn't much of that stereotypical dimorphism where the ladies have more feminine traits. Nope, both male and female dire wolves rocked similar teeth size and bone structure. Now, in today's animal kingdom, the extent of this size difference usually hints at the breeding system. If males have giant canine teeth, it's often a sign of intense competition for females, and the system might be polygamous. One big shot male dominating and mating with multiple females. But with dire wolves, where both sexes had almost identical canine teeth, it's a different story. This suggests there wasn't much competition between the guys, and the researchers are leaning towards a more pair-bonded setup. In simpler terms, it's believed that dire wolf packs were likely monogamous, with one male cozying up to one female for some wolfy romance. Now, what did they like to eat? Turns out these guys were big meatheads, with about 70% of their food coming from meat, wild horses and bison, with the occasional fancy feast featuring mastodon, and giant ground sloths were their absolute fave. However, they didn't really like smaller snacks. That's probably because the rear teeth of dire wolves were built for tearing, not chewing. So, it seems like they didn't get to savor the flavors through a good chew. Instead, these guys were more into tearing off hefty chunks of flesh and gulping it down in one go. Now, this dining preference might have played a role in their eventual extinction. The thinking goes that being picky eaters, especially in a changing environment, could have put dire wolves at a disadvantage as their large prey, like the wild horses and bison, faced challenges or changes in their habitats, dire wolves might not have easily adapted to a new menu. However, surprisingly, they'd also crave some sweet treats sometimes, which drew them to fruits like berries. Yeah, I know, they don't really look like the type to eat berries. What's known about their living preferences is that these beasts definitely lived in packs, and this is a common belief especially because many sites across the Americas have turned up loads of dire wolf remains, all lined together. One of the most famous spots for this ancient wolf party is, of course, the La Brea Tar Pits. And the crazy thing is, there are so many dire wolf fossils found there that it's pretty convincing. These wolves were into group living, for sure. However, we don't know exactly how big these wolf packs were. Estimates suggest they could range anywhere from 12 to 30 individuals. Man, that's a lot of wolves. But you know that their pack structure is exactly what made them super successful, because together they were a challenge for other predators. And fossil remains tell us that dire wolves were indeed the real kings of the carnivores back in their time. The pack had a power duo, two alphas leading the way, and the rest of the gang were the offspring of these alpha pairs from both the current and previous years. Now, dire wolves shared their turf with a bunch of other predators, like the Smilodon, American Lion, Short-Faced Bear, and Modern Cougars. This crowded predator scene meant fierce competition for food, and studies on the bones of the dire wolf's prey revealed that these wolves were no dainty eaters. They went all in, chomping down as much as possible, as quickly as possible, which was clearly a survival strategy given their environment. Moreover, humans might have been a bit of a headache for these big canines too. After all, both humans and dire wolves shared North America for thousands of years, with humans arriving over 20,000 years ago and dire wolves sticking around until about 9,500 years ago. Now let's talk about their sudden disappearing act. Scientists are still in the dark about exactly why dire wolves ghosted on us. But here's what we do know. They vanished along with other big Ice Age animals. There's one pretty famous theory though. Yep, you know it, they blame it on climate change. Perhaps the big prey that dire wolves chowed down on kicked the bucket due to the changing climate. Meanwhile, gray wolves and coyotes survived because they could switch to smaller snacks. However, this theory is turning out to be a bit flawed, because if anything, the dire wolf is seen as better equipped to survive than the gray wolf. So now, we have another possibility that perhaps this beast had a completely different social structure compared to gray wolves. That could have been what really led to its extinction, instead of shortage of prey. And of course, humans might have played a part. Early Native Americans could have been competing with dire wolves for their prey, leading to tough times for these ancient predators. In the end, 
these North American giants, 20% larger than today's gray wolves, are considered one of the most famous species of prehistoric carnivores to ever exist. Their dominance, notably in the La Brea tar pits, challenges existing perceptions of the Pleistocene carnivore hierarchies. Even though it's gone extinct, this magnificent animal will continue to live on in our imaginations when we reminisce on the Ice Age. What fascinated you the most about it? Is it their unique genes, their huge size, or the mystery behind why they vanished? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And if you enjoy learning about ancient creatures, make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more cool stuff about the past.